let me give you some uh, references for uh, studying this uh, quantum Hall effect. And uh, to remind you that we are uh, really talking about the integer quantum Hall effect for now. Uh, which can be understood from a non-interacting electronic picture. Uh, we don't need to invoke the Coulomb interactions into the problem yet uh, and uh, we shall be carrying ahead with that. So, I'll give you some references which are important and uh, they are, I mean this There is a reviews of modern physics and this is um, volume number 58, this is volume 58 page 519 and it is a 1986. This is a uh, APS the American Physical Society, one of the journals on uh, reviews, uh, very famous journal. Then there was another by Robert Laughlin and uh, this is uh, Physical Review B and uh, it is a volume 23 page 5632 and 1981. And then uh, there are um, excellent review article, one of them by S. M. Garvin. Uh, this is available in the archive, it is a preprint. It is um, 9907002. There is another excellent one which uh, I shall be referring uh, every once in a while by David Tong. Uh, this is a preprint as well and uh, it is probably a part of this uh, TIFR Infosys lectures and uh, this is again available freely in archive 1606, 1606.06687. Apart from that, there are a number of references which uh, uh, may be used. I will tell you as and when they are used and they are useful uh, for you to learn the subject. So, uh, let me uh, then uh, go back to the uh, kind of discussions that we have been doing. Let us say the properties of the Landau levels. And uh, to talk about the properties, of course, you know that uh, these Landau levels are uh, absolutely flat. And just to remind you that uh, the energy obtained was like uh, n plus half uh, h cross omega b. It is uh, same as that of a harmonic oscillator excepting that uh, in a usual harmonic oscillator that you learn in the first level quantum mechanics, it is uh, a constant which depends only on the, the force constant k and the mass of the particle uh, whereas here uh, omega b uh, depends on the magnetic field. It is actually uh, uh, E b over m. And this is uh, called as the cyclotron uh, frequency. Okay. So, these levels if you draw them, uh, they look like this is n equal to 0, n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3 and so on. And I have argued and showed explicitly that uh, these levels are infinitely, in principle infinitely degenerate and the degeneracy is only limited by uh, the value or the magnitude of the magnetic field uh, and uh, it depends upon the uh, area of the sample. Now, uh, if you take an area to be uh, large enough, um, 
uh, they are not very large but uh, this can be not microscopic but macroscopic area say a few millimeter by a few millimeter that is uh, can be called as uh, macroscopic mm. and then uh, it, it it only depends on the magnetic field and we have shown that uh, 12 to 15 tesla of magnetic field is being used so these are really uh, degenerate and um, and they are flat of course uh, so this is n equal to 0 n equal to 1 just like a harmonic oscillator uh, there is no uh, restriction that n equal to 0 won't be available remember that a particle in a box n equal to 0 was not allowed because in uh, what it means is that uh, uh, there is no particle there n equal to 0 means that but here of course n equal to 0 is an allowed level and uh, n equal to 3 etc and so on okay so uh, when i say they are flat which means that they have no dispersion so this is e uh, and they have no dispersion that means that uh, the velocity of the electrons if you remember that uh, your band theory uh, these uh, classes uh, or the band theory chapter it tells you that vk is actually 1 by h cross del e del k or it depends upon the the slope of the band energies now these are completely flat so the velocities are zero velocity of the electrons are zero uh, and uh, that means the kinetic energy of the electrons is uh, zero so the kinetic energy equal to zero okay so they have no kinetic energy and the only energy that uh, remains uh, is the potential energy okay and uh, because the number is very high because the degeneracy is very high it's very likely that they would be interacting um, at least moderately to strongly and these effects we'll discuss later when we talk about fractional quantum hall effect okay but uh, these are some of the properties of these levels let's talk about another one the second one let's say is the of course they are highly degenerate and uh, which i said uh, but what are the implications of that let us uh, see so it's uh, the highly degenerate and it says that uh, we have said this that the degeneracy is determined by uh, the magnetic field and a area of the sample uh, so a is equal to the area of the sample all right so uh, this is um, already known and um, now these uh, plateaus that I have shown you several times of the Hall resistivity, so the resistivities have plateaus like this and so on. So, these plateaus are, so this is the Hall resistivity, okay. So, let us call it as a rho h and this is the scale is set by h over e square and this is n equal to 1, all right. And uh, so, these plateaus are actually connected to this uh, degeneracy uh, in the following fashion. So, your rho x uh, y or rho h which is same as rho x y which is a transverse resistivity is h over nu e square where nu equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Okay. Uh, so, now this nu is related to the degeneracy in the following way that nu is equal to n0 divided by g by a okay, where n0 is the electronic density. sort of uh, going back that is I am revising some of the things that I have already said and uh, this is nothing but uh, n0 divided by uh, eb over h and if you remember this uh, g over a is uh, uh, degeneracy per unit area and uh, this is uh, I can write this as n0 divided by b uh, and divided by uh, you know uh, h over e and that is uh, your h over e in the uh, is nothing but h over e is equal to a flux quantum uh, which has a value 4.13 into 10 to the power minus 15 Weber. All right, so uh, this is the value of the flux quantum. So, this is uh, 
really like n0 divided by uh, b over phi 0 or say n0 phi 0 divided by b okay so this the integer that you see in the plateaus that uh, is related to the degeneracy in this particular fashion now we demand or at least the experiments dictate that nu has uh, values which are integer so which means that if you uh, really write this as instead of this you write this as uh, as b over phi 0 then uh, you know this uh, is actually the, the it'll take integer values when the ratio of the density of carriers and this b by phi zero and if you do not talk about uh, the degeneracy per unit area then we can neglect this and can uh, in fact uh, let me uh, remove this degeneracy per unit area and write it as only degeneracy in which case we'll have a a here we'll have a a here which means that these degeneracy is equal to this is n0 divided by phi upon phi 0 okay so uh, then this plateau uh, integers of the plateau they actually are uh, ratio of these uh, electron density divided by the uh, the flux divided by the flux quantum okay so when this becomes an integer you see a uh, a plateau in the resistivity and uh, as you change your magnetic field the phi is changed then this uh, deviates from being an integer and then you see that there is a sharp increase in the whole resistivity and then till it comes to the next integer uh, it again then shows a uh, plateau in the resistivity so this is how the degeneracy that we talked about of the landau levels are connected to uh, the Hall uh, plateaus or the quantization of the Hall plateaus. Okay, I've already partly answered this question, but uh, uh, number three, uh, what is the conductivity of the Landau levels? And why I said that I have already um, or partly answered this question is that I told you that the velocity of the electrons is equal to zero. Uh, so if the velocity of the electrons is equal to zero because of his completely flat feature, the E doesn't depend upon K, uh, E is independent of K. So del E del K is equal to zero. So that's why the velocity is equal to zero. If the electrons have zero velocity, how can they be conducting? Okay. Uh, but ho however, a more a rigorous analysis also shows the same thing. Uh, Let us talk about um, uh, calculating the current. So, this is the expectation value of the current operator which is J and uh, which can be written as uh, minus E and uh, these psi and uh, V and psi. So, these psi's are the wave functions corresponding to the Landau levels. Okay, so uh, you're taking the expectation value of the velocity operator between them, and the velocity is nothing but minus e by m uh, psi and p uh, psi, and now this p in presence of a magnetic field is just not the momentum, but this is equal to p plus e a, which is what we have learned. So this has to be changed in presence of a magnetic field by p plus e a where a is the vector potential and you have to take the expectation value of that. Now let us say we talk about uh, the j x that is the x component of the field that means that we are uh, talking about vector potential which is uh, in the x direction. So the gauge is chosen such that it is in the x direction and uh, these size uh, if you remember that these size are actually comprises of the Hermite polynomials uh, and multiplied by the Gaussians. Okay, so and this Hermite polynomials have this property uh, that these are written by H n 
uh, and this h n being even, it is an even polynomial of x. Uh, that is a special coordinate and if n is odd, it is an odd polynomial of x. Okay, So, which means that if it, you change x to minus x for n to be even, it does not change sign. Uh, but if you change uh, x to x for n equal to odd, it changes sign. So, uh, we can calculate the x component of the current and which can be written as uh, minus um, e by m l b root over pi. All these uh, factors were written earlier and uh, this is equal to dy and then exponential y minus y naught square. I am taking the same gauge as uh, I have taken earlier and uh, this is equal to uh, h cross k minus e b y. So, because if you remember that we have taken a gauge in which it is um, uh, minus b y and a 0 0, uh, this is called as a Landau gauge. Now, if you try to solve this integral, it is easy because uh, it is over this entire minus infinity to plus infinity. Uh, this is a, an even function uh, and this is an odd function of y. Okay? Uh, so, an even function and an odd function when they are multiplied that gives you an odd function. So, the integrand is odd and when the integrand is odd, uh, if you integrate it over um, minus infinity to plus infinity, this is equal to 0. Now, that makes us wonder that if the conductivity of the Landau levels are 0, then uh, why, how does this Hall conductivity arise uh, or the Hall resistivity arise, the inverse of that? Uh, and that question will be answered, but in general, the Hall, uh, the Landau levels do not have uh, any conductivity or they cannot conduct because of their flat flatness. Okay. All right. Let us uh, go to uh, another topic uh, which is related to this and uh, this topic is, uh, let us say we talk, want to talk about addition of uh, spins into the problem. Okay. So, we want to add spin of the electrons. As you know, these electrons intrinsically have their spins we have not taken into account. Why have not we taken into account? You could say this or rather uh, see this in this particular fashion that uh, since we are talking about uh, a magnetic field which is large and pointing in the uh, transverse direction say z direction which is perpendicular to the plane, uh, then uh, the spins of all the electrons must be pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. Okay? That is how the min energy is minimized. Now, if all of them are uh, pointing in the same direction, then you do not need to talk about separately about the spin of the electrons. So, that is why we did not uh, talk about the spin, but uh, electrons intrinsically have spin. So, what happens when we talk about that? Is there any change in the physics that we get? So, uh, let us say that we want to include spin. So, one is include spin in the discussion. What happens when you include spin uh, in presence of a magnetic field? There is a Zeeman term that emerges. Okay? And uh, this uh, Zeeman term can be written as so, delta, uh, let us call it Zeeman, so write it with a capital Z, uh, delta is the energy scale of the problem. Uh, so, if this is G uh, mu B into B, okay? uh, where B is the magnetic field, uh, mu B is called as a Bohr magneton and uh, G is called as a, a Lander G factor and G is um, almost equal to 2, let us take it as 2 and mu B. Uh, which is the Bohr magneton uh, for an electron, it can be written as E h cross over 2 m. Uh, so, this gives you a 2 into uh, E h cross uh, by 2 m into B. So, this is equal to E h cross by m into B. Okay? If you take the spins into account, each spin uh, will have this energy, extra energy because of uh, uh, they will couple to the magnetic field 
uh, and uh, it, we are just simply talking about the z component of spin. So, uh, this is uh, because the magnetic field is in the z direction. Okay, so it, it just goes by. So, the Hamiltonian for such a thing is sigma dot b, where sigma are the Pauli matrices, uh, spin half particle. We are talking about specifically about electrons, and uh, so this gives rise to thing which is like h cross by 2 and uh, sz and b and so on. Okay, that is how this thing comes. So, we are pretty much talking about a, a classical or a semi classical picture. So, the Zeeman energy scale is. Uh, if you take this thing into account, uh, then the energy scale is, uh, is set by this E h cross by m uh, into b. Now, the funny thing is, uh, you will see that the distance between or the difference between uh, the Landau levels, okay, let us call that as delta LL, just to remind you that it is n plus half h cross omega b. So, uh, they are all equidistant. So, the distance between them, I mean distance means I am just talking about the energy difference between them is h cross omega b and omega b is nothing but uh, equal to E b over m. So, this is E b over m. Okay? Now, this is what we have learned. So, delta L L is also E h cross b over m. Okay? So, delta z and delta L L which we have already done they are exactly same. What it means is that say uh, the spectrum, the Landau level spectrum for uh, spin uh, up electrons will coincide with uh, you know one level uh, or one n lower of the down spin electron. So, what I mean to say is that because these two are same and this is the uh, energy difference um, between the uh, the up and the down spin electrons. So, uh, suppose this is the n equal to uh, 1 and n equal to 2 just taking two levels. So, the, for the spin down particles this will correspond to um, the same thing. Uh, so, this is spin down corresponding to n equal to 1 will correspond to spin up for n equal to 2. So, this is n equal to 2 and this is n equal to 1. So, they will coincide and no longer be able to call this as n equal to 1 because this is n equal to 1 for the down spin but it is n equal to 2 for the up. And similarly, you know uh, I mean if I call this as n equal to 2 for the down, I have to call this as n equal to 3 for the up. So, this one goes away. Okay. So, uh, but you see that this is a, a trivial, uh, it is just that nth level of the one kind of spins, uh, they coincide with n plus one nth level of the other kind of spins. But however, this is uh, really back of the envelope calculation, uh, it does not happen. So, for example, in uh, gallium arsenide, uh, when these uh, spins are taken into account, uh, the Zeeman energy uh, that is delta Z is typically 70 times smaller than the Landau level energies. So, one can conclude that even though trying to include the effect of spin on this uh, the quantum Hall effect or the integer quantum Hall effect that we are talking about is a worthwhile exercise. However, it does not give you anything significant or uh, that we should be you know really worried about. It is just that nth level, nth Landau level of one spin coincides with the n plus one nth level of the other spin. Two. Let us include the electric field. Now, this is important for the reason that there is indeed an electric field in the problem which we have not talked about when we considered the Hamiltonian in presence of a, a perpendicular magnetic field be in the z direction and accordingly we have chosen a vector potential to be either in the x direction or y direction or x and y directions uh, that we have talked about. But the important 
uh, point is that that we have talked about only the magnetic field and have not talked about the electric field as yet. If uh, that needs to be taken into account, it enters through a scalar potential. Okay, just like the magnetic field enters through a vector potential, uh, this um, uh, electric field enters through a scalar potential, and um, this uh, the scalar uh, function or the scalar potential that it uh, uh, you know uh, corresponds to is uh, E x. Okay, the E is equal to minus grad phi. Okay, just that this relations uh, you should keep in mind that B equal to curl A. Uh, so, there is a vector potential uh, associated with a magnetic field, whereas the electric field is associated with a scalar potential, which we write it as phi here. So, phi is equal to minus E x. Uh, so, remember E is not the energy here. So, we will keep writing energy with a curly E. So, this is energy and uh, this uh, E straight E that we you see here is uh, the electric field okay uh, so in the previous slides we of course took the liberty because there was no electric field there uh, but now we have to be careful okay <clears throat> so let me write down the hamiltonian of a system in presence of both the electric and the magnetic field and let me introduce a little bit of change there so that you get a practice of um, what we are doing now I will write down the um, a gauge to be slightly different. Now I take a gauge where A is not minus BY but this is equal to 0 and a BX and a 0. Okay? So instead of uh, what we have taken earlier BY 0 0. Okay? Now this is a valid gauge as well because this gives you a, if you take a curl of that this gives you BZ cap. Okay, and uh, that's exactly what we want. Uh, and uh, so I take a gauge, this gauge that we just said, so this one, and that's why the y component of p is now affected. And uh, this is uh, equal to so that's the Hamiltonian and plus uh, e e x because of this uh, negative sign and the negative sign of the electronic charge. So you have another uh, this um, linear in x uh, and uh, this change in gauge that you see is simply because uh, I have the electric field in the x direction. There is another x here and another x here. So uh, that is why because otherwise you will have both y and x. It is not a problem at all but it is just that I wanted to uh, simplify the discussion here. Okay. Now, what I will do is that instead of solving this again this problem that h psi equal to e psi, instead of again solving this there is a simpler way out. What I can do is that I can uh, complete the square because this is uh, uh, let me do a bit of uh, so this is py square plus e square b square x square plus 2 uh, e b x p y and uh, plus uh, e e x. So, you see there is a p y square, uh, there is a term which is uh, linear in uh, p y and of course, these are constant terms and uh, uh, if you look at it from the other way that there is a x square and there is a x and these are constant terms as well. So, what we do is that we uh, just complete the square and write this Hamiltonian and then uh, once when you do that you uh, are left with uh, some uh, things which are this we will take it as a little example that this is equal to h cross omega b and minus e e this is electric field uh, k l b square plus e e uh, divided by m omega b square uh, plus half m e square by b square okay so what i do is that i entirely open it up and then try to sort of write it in terms of uh, a complete square uh, so the uh, these uh, term which you see here this term is an important term this of course you have seen 
uh, with only the magnetic field. Even if there is no electric field, you will still have this. And uh, uh, this is a term which is, uh, it looks like a kinetic energy, it is like a half mv square. If you can somehow relate the velocity of the particle which is the ratio of the electric and the magnetic fields. Uh, this, uh, the middle term is important because this has a k which is the momentum vector or the wave vector. Uh, this was missing and uh, I said that the, the velocity of the electrons uh, uh, is zero for the reason that uh, the Landau levels are completely flat which is no longer the case, it acquires a k dependence and in which case the electrons are uh, becoming dispersive now and if they become dispersive, they will acquire a velocity. That is exactly what uh, the idea is. <laughs> okay. And um, the electrons are actually displaced along the x axis by an amount which is uh, Me over Eb square, we will see that displaced along the x axis. by m e uh, over e b square okay uh, so it depends on both the electric magnitude of the electric and the magnetic fields so this uh, gives you something not too difficult it gives you a wave function which is again a two dimensional wave function which is equal to your psi n k now i i had a n anyway because psi was a function of this quantum number n which went with uh, you know n plus half h cross omega. Now because of this new term called k, uh, I have a psi n k as well and it is simply, uh, uh, it is displaced from its original by this uh, e b square which is what I uh, just said and y. Okay? So this is the new wave function and uh, which is different than the earlier wave function. However, uh, the nature or the qualitative nature of the wave functions remains same. The farther the Vy, which is the Y component of the velocity is uh, equal to 1 over H cross uh, del E N K del K. Okay. And, uh, which now I will just take a derivative with respect to k as you can see that there is a k term there. So, if I take a derivative with respect to k, it is simple, it just picks up a factor which is minus e into capital E into this Lb square. Okay? And uh, this is equal to nothing but e over, uh, there is a minus sign which I should write. So, this is e by h cross e uh, Lb square. And Lb, just to remind you that this is the magnetic length which we have talked about earlier, which is equal to Eb. So, Vy, so it acquires a velocity in the y direction and um, L in terms of this uh, electric field. So, it depends upon uh, the strength of the electric field and uh, it also depends upon the magnetic field, uh, uh, inverse of the magnetic field. So, it is like E by B because Lb uh, square goes as E by B. So, it is a ratio of the electric uh, to the magnetic field. And um, uh, so, if you want to know that uh, what happened to these uh, flat Landau levels, which were earlier completely flat and equi of course equidistant. Now, let me write it, uh, draw it with a color. So, this becomes like this, it becomes like this, it becomes like this. Okay? So, this is n equal to 1, n equal to 2 and n equal to 3. So, E versus K and this is k for different ends. Okay? So, this is the only change that happens when you include uh, actually an electric field. So, it does not um, have too much of change or any uh, really qualitative change, but this dispersion is important in the presence of the field. Okay? And, um, uh, and of course, uh, if you, uh, the Vy uh, it, as I said that if you put Lb, it, this is equal to E uh, into electric field H cross and then uh, H cross by Eb. So, this is equal to E by B. Okay? So, this uh, 
energy that you see here so this is this is the energy not not the hamiltonian so this is the energy that and this is a function of nk and uh, this energy is actually can be viewed as uh, the following so epsilon nk uh, consists of three terms One is, of course, uh, it's that of an oscillator. So, n plus half h cross omega b is that of a harmonic oscillator, which we know, which we have seen earlier. Number two, which is uh, uh, basically this is the like a potential energy of a wave packet, uh, which is localized at x equal to uh, minus k l b square uh, minus m e divided by uh, e omega b square. It is a potential energy of a wave packet. And third, it's the kinetic energy of a particle whose uh, energy is given by half mv y square, which is uh, half m into e square by b square. That's the, so if you see this, so this is the usual harmonic oscillator energy. Uh, this is like a wave packet that is localized because this is like a length. Okay, so E electric field into charge into some uh, distance will give rise to a wave uh, that is a potential energy of a wave packet. And this is that particle with uh, uh, moving in the y direction. Okay, remember that you have taken the uh, gauge to be in the in the y direction which is b into x. So, uh, this is uh, what happens when you take into account the spin and the electric field into consideration uh, for a charged particle. Okay. Let me um, go and uh, give you a, a physical picture of the Okay, uh, so uh, this um, physical picture uh, that emerges is that I have a this is a 2D electron gas. Okay, I have taken a rectangular sample and uh, uh, it is put in a strong uh, magnetic field. Okay. Uh, let's not talk about electric field and spin anymore because we know how to deal with them. Uh, these uh, electrons that are here, they would undergo a cyclotron motion like this. And uh, the cyclotron radius is inversely proportional to B, which means as B increases, uh, the cyclotron radius decreases. Okay which can be you know easily understood from the classical electrodynamic equations okay now this is what happens in the bulk so the bulk is completely insulating because you see the electrons cannot drift from one side to another okay or or they cannot carry current in any of the directions because there are all these modes or all these electronic orbits which are closed and closed orbits cannot uh, give rise to uh, such uh, electronic transport. But we know transport occurs. There are Hall conductivity at the transverse edges of the sample. So what happens is that there are these edge modes. They cannot complete a full circle and they skip from one edge to another, which happens here as well okay uh, 
it happens on the other uh, sides as well. Let us only talk about this. So, you see that these actually take part in conduction and these are called as skipping orbits. Okay, so these are skipping orbits. Now, this is the skipping orbit in the other transverse direction. So, actually the conduction takes place via these edge modes or the conducting modes or the conducting channels of the material. Okay, and uh, this is that's why you see that the bulk of the system or the interior of the system behaves like an insulator because it doesn't conduct. So, the bulk behaves like an insulator and the edge behaves like a conductor. Okay, and they have different names. So these are, of course, called insulator or uh, gapped systems where the energy level is gapped. That's why it's called an insulator. And this conductor is sometimes called the metallic edge and so on. Metallic because they're conducting edge. And that's why because of this ambiguity in their behavior of the bulk and the edges, they are called as topological insulators. Okay, um, they are often written with Ti. Okay, because the insulator, usual insulator, which are not really interesting to study because uh, like a rubber or a plastic is an insulator. Okay, and plastic is an insulator means they do not conduct. Okay, and if you want to stop conduction, if you want uh, a, a short electrical short not to happen, uh, then you put a, a you know a spacer in between. Uh, you know those uh, fuses are made up of uh, heavy ceramic material which are completely non-conducting or rather insulating material. They are good insulators and many uh, there are many things in nature which are good insulators and um, they are good and they are important for um, a variety of purpose that uh, we see on everyday basis but however uh, their electronic properties are usually not interesting okay however these ones because they have a difference in behavior of the bulk and the edges uh, their behavior is uh, interesting and this opened up a very uh, you know rich field of study and uh, several uh, topological insulators are discovered um, if you want to uh, know more about them uh, there is um, a review by uh, uh, Zahid Hassan MZ Hassan in reviews of modern physics I'm not sure whether he writes with 2s but it could be 2s so it's uh, again I don't remember the but if you search you will get it okay uh, and he gives a very detailed account of the discovery and the synthesis and the properties of the uh, topological insulators. Okay. Now, having said this, let me tell you that what physically is happening uh, with the Hall plateaus. Okay. I take this picture, I just draw it by hand, but you have seen this picture a number of times and uh, I just draw two plateaus. Uh, it's understood. So, this is the Hall resistivity which I'm plotting and uh, in unit of H over E square and this uh, is the rho h is actually h over nu e square where nu is equal to 1, 2 and so on. Okay, This is what we have told several times and uh, I am just showing you two new values nu equal to 1 and nu equal to 2 and let us try to understand that what happens physically. Okay, Mathematically of course uh, we will have to see this but uh, what happens physically. So, uh, let us talk about the Landau levels. Uh, let us go to the Landau level. This is a land, uh, I mean, this is completely flat. So, let me try to plot it 
flat Landau level and say I just talk about only two Landau levels n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 or n equal to 0 and n equal to 1 either is fine just any two arbitrary Landau levels. Now these Landau levels of course we the way we have uh, calculated they look like two sharp lines uh, with no extent but however there is uh, I've told a number of times that uh, these are uh, disordered material and we'll, uh, we'll also learn that how uh, these two dimensional materials are being uh, formed uh, experimentally or they are being synthesized experimentally and uh, when you have a large disorder you what happens is that you have uh, these levels to be broadened okay each of these levels to be broadened like this okay now the landau levels are no longer sharp lines but they are slightly broadened and the broadened is because of the effects of disorder which um, gives additional energy levels uh, in the vicinity of this level. Just think of in, uh, for a semiconductor, when you dope a semiconductor, there are N type or P type semiconductors, there are always additional energy levels that uh, appear just above the valence band or just below the conduction band. So these are these additional energy levels will make this uh, or rather account for this conductivity of the semiconductor and it's exactly uh, in the same spirit that these Landau levels which were sharp uh, the degeneracy is somewhat lifted it's not completely lifted that is these two Landau levels will never merge n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 will never merge and uh, these delta LL uh, should always be uh, you know much greater than the uh, let's call the disorder energy strength uh, or the disorder present in the system or the energy scale associated with disorder okay so uh, they are still well separated excepting that uh, they have uh, you know broadened a little and if you consider a uh, value of the magnetic field uh, because you're sweeping the system with as a function of the magnetic field so when you uh, consider another magnetic field which is uh, which is larger uh, in value uh, than the present one then the uh, these uh, the Landau levels will be farther separated because uh, they the distance is given by h cross omega over uh, h cross omega which is e b over m and as you increase the magnetic field this will keep increasing and so on uh, so what happens is that when you sweep the magnetic field what happens okay or because this is as a function of the magnetic field so you are increasing magnetic field so when you increase magnetic field the the density of the charge carriers or the density of the electrons increases how it happens because suppose i uh, want to understand that how in a non interacting system how we talk about uh, the density the density is given by you know uh, some uh, fermi distribution function uh, multiplied by the density of states and you integrate over all e from 0 to uh, mu uh, that gives you the total number of electrons or the charges that are present in the system uh, this is the fermi distribution function fd distribution which you know uh, from your elementary statistical mechanics that f of epsilon is equal to exponential beta epsilon minus mu plus 1 and g epsilon is the density of states okay and uh, this will give you the uh, this uh, n which is the carrier density now as you have magnetic field into the problem they are still non interacting the energy levels change okay so if you still want to calculate your n becomes a function of b or rather your mu becomes a function of b that is your chemical potential continuously have to adjust itself such that it can accommodate more and more electrons into the system as b is becoming larger and larger okay so this chemical potential as you change b it acquires a dependence on b and uh, when you change magnetic field then what happens is that the chemical potential starts rising because of the density starts rising and uh, it comes to the first Landau level and it sees that there are number of you know conducting states 
and then the conduction can happen just like metallic states the conduction can happen without any resistance okay so the resistance shows a plateau and then it crosses the first landau level or the lowest landau level and goes out of it and it finds no uh, states that it can uh, you know conduct so there is a very large jump in the resistivity uh, that happens till it goes to this when it starts finding a number of energy levels. So let's say we start from this and then we go to this and so on because we are increasing magnetic field. So this is in the direction of that. So we start from here that is we are, when we are here. Okay. So at this point let me uh, point it out by. So let's say this is the point A. This is the point A this is the point b c and d so this is the point b this is the uh, point c and this is the point d okay so d here okay so as the magnetic field is increased the chemical potential rises and as the chemical potential rises it enters into this landau band and uh, why i'm calling it a band because there are a number of uh, close by very close by energy levels uh, which uh, the electron finds it easier to conduct which means the resistivity kind of flattens and that's what happens between a and b so it gets a large number of conducting channels uh, and then it doesn't get anything from b to c and hence the resistivity just rises okay and and goes to a value c and then again it finds uh, a large number of energy levels and so on and then the resistivity uh, shows a plateau because it gets a lot of conducting channels and so on. So this is the origin of the plateaus uh, in physical terms if you like. <clears throat> okay. So uh, I think uh, uh, these uh, will uh, give you a, a holistic idea that how the Landau levels are connected uh, to this whole discussion of plateaus. Uh, being found uh, at integer um, values of these uh, h over e square and how the filling electron filling or the degeneracies are uh, related to that. Um, we shall be uh, continuing uh, from here and uh, talk about other things which are uh, uh, like the experimental realization of the two dimensional materials is one important thing and then there are theoretical uh, understanding or ansatz or there are thought experiments one of them a uh, beautiful visualization or conceptualization of this quantum hall effect is called as a uh, uh, which Laughlin uh, saw um, I have written down the name of Laughlin in, in the first slide uh, when I uh, have referred to his work. Uh, he uh, saw it as a quantum pump. So he actually talked about a disk geometry uh, and uh, then a flux threading through that. Uh, so th there's a very nice you know understanding of that which is called as a Corbino disk geometry. We'll, uh, we'll learn that. And um, there are uh, other things such as, you know, uh, Shubnikov de Haas oscillation. So what happens to the, uh, the magneto resistivity? Does it, uh, that is the direction, the, the resistivity in the direction of current. It shows oscillations as well with some uh, particular, you know, time period or frequency. Uh, that's called as a Shubnikov de Haas oscillations, etc. We'll see all of that.